Hi guys. So Devjit this side. So I hope you all are fine. So in this video, we will be discussing about some of the variation of inheritance type of questions. So in interviews, we might have seen like there are different type of questions that has been asked based upon OOPS concept. So specifically, they will ask much upon inheritance. They will focus more upon the inheritance based concept. So in this video, it will be dedicated towards the inheritance based output based questions. So what kind of different varieties of inheritance based question can come that we will be discussing in this video. So without any delay, let's get started. I hope you can see my screen now. So we will be discussing here 12 important inheritance based output based questions. So what kind of questions can come and they will tell you to predict the output of this sample code. So how will you predict the output and what variations of questions can come? Let's start with that. So first variation of questions, what can it come? The first variation of questions will be type one is static methods. So what does it mean? Okay, so it means like it can be instance method, it can be static method. So I've given you some sample code for your understanding. So there is a class called parent class, there is child class extending the parent class, simple inheritance concept. In parent class, there is a static method, which is display method. Okay, in this something is printed, then there is child class in which there is display method again. And then within that, there is having child static method. So what is this concept called? So it is static methods. So it is not overriding. Okay, it is actually method hiding because static is present. Okay, so now if I'm creating the object of child class and we are storing it in a parent reference and with that parent reference, I'm calling that display method. So now tell me like which particular method will be called parent class display method will be called or child class display method will be called. Take your time. You can pause the video over here and then you can think on it. Okay. So I hope you have thought about upon it. So basically parent class is having display method, child class is having display method as well. And there is static method. Okay. So here overriding will not happen. So what will happen? It will create a new child object and then it is extending from parent class. So it will go to the parent class and it will call the display method of the parent class. So it will print parent static method. So let's see the output of it. It will print parent static methods because static methods are not overridden. Okay, so it is a kind of method hiding. Okay, it's not method overriding. I hope you got the concept. Second variation of question is this. There is a constructor chaining based question. Okay, so class A is having a constructor with constructor of A printer, class B extending class A and B is having its own constructor. Okay, so now what we are doing, we are creating the object of B class, which is the child class of A. Okay, now what will be, what will be my output? So here what will happen, it is creating the object of B class. Okay, so what it will do, it B is extending from parent class, which is A. So it will go to A class and then from A class, it will print constructor of A. And after that, it will print constructor of B. So it will start from parent to their child. Okay, because without parent, child can't come, right? So always if it is extend relationship is there. So it will start from the topmost parent and then it will go to the latest child okay so that will be the flow for constructor chaining okay so this is the output for that so output will be what it will print constructor of a and then it will print constructor of b it will start from parent it is like top down approach it will start from parent and then it will print the child class constructor output okay so constructor of a and constructor of b next type of question is method overloading okay so Parent class is there. Okay, parent class is having show method, which is having some parent written over there as a as a SOP statement. Then there is a child class which extends the parent class, which also has show method, but it is having some parameter with it. It is having parameter with method method declaration name is same. So what does that mean? So it's simply overloaded method. Okay, so method overloading is this only, right? We will have the same method name, but the uh, method parameters will change. Okay, it may have same number of arguments, order of arguments may change and type of arguments may change for method overloading to suffice. So here, if you observe the child class show method is having child with argument as a SOP statement. So now what we are doing from main method, we are creating the object of this child one. Okay, and then we are storing it in a parent reference. So both is having show method. One is without any argument, one is with argument. So now if I call show method, then what will be my output? So here it's very clearly is being shown over here. So we are not passing any data. So, so if you can see over here, show method is not having any argument. So it will go to the parent class first. It will start seeing from the parent and it is not static type. So it will start looking from the 
parent class. So it will go to the parent class and see that if show method is there or not. Yes, show method is there. So it will print parent parent only. Okay. So now type four. So it's fourth type of uh, code. Okay, it's a kind of variation of inheritance. So method overriding concept can also come. It's very important concept in inheritance. Okay. So here, if you observe, there is class parent two. Okay, I've created different different parents, parent one, parent two, because same name it will not allow, right? So we have created parent two. So here we will be having display method with parent display as a SOP statement. Then child class is there, which extends parent class and it overrides that display method. Okay, so if child class is extending the parent class, then there is an option to override that method, right? So we are overriding that display method and we are printing child display. Now from main method, what we are doing, we are creating the object of this child two class. And we are storing it in a parent to reference. And from parent to reference, I'm calling display method. Now tell me like which particular method will be called, which class method will be called. Like display method from parent class or display method from child class. Think about it. So I hope you have thought about it, about it. So here what is happening it is creating the object of child class. So it will go to the parent class display method first. But here there is an overriding concept. So if you know about the overriding concept, it actually overrides the meaning of overriding is what it overrides the actual parent class display method or the parent class method, which has been overridden in a child class. It will override the functionalities of the parent class method. So here we are calling the display method. So here what it will happen, it will first go to the parent class, but it will see like there is an overriding happening in the child class. So it will go to the child class and it will print whatever is there in the child class method. So child class overrides the display method of the parent class. So it will print child display as output. Okay. I hope you got the clarity on this. So it was very important for interview overloading and overriding. Just go through these two concepts. Okay. So type five is private method in inheritance. So inheritance can also have private methods, right? So here, if you observe, there's a parent two we have created. Okay. So class parent two is having display method. Okay. Then this SOP statement of parent display and child two extends parent two. Okay. It is having child display. Okay. But in the main method, what we are doing, we are creating the object of the child class and storing it in the parent reference and we are calling the display method. So what will happen? So here, if, if you are observing what we are doing over here, we are seeing like we are extending the parent class reference. A private is the very particular thing. Like it is specific to that particular class. But here, if you observe, we are making use of default type. Okay, so it will not allow basically. So here it will try to extend the properties, but private class private methods are not accessible, right? So if private methods are not accessible, so it will print, it will show compile time error. Okay, so any private kind of thing if you are showing over here, so it will not allow and private methods can't be accessed directly. Okay, because whenever you are creating the object of child class, it will go to the parent class reference first. It will point to the parent reference. Okay, and there it is private, so it will not be able to access the data over there. Okay, so that means it will throw compile time error. So this is very important concept. Okay. This is also one of the important concept. Okay, in inheritance. So there is instance variable hiding concept is there. So there is a parent class. Okay, in that there is a in, uh, instance. Uh, there is one variable defined like in x equal to ten. Okay, then there is a child three class which extends this parent three class, and we are just renaming the uh, we are reutilizing that value of x, and we and we are reinitializing that x value to twenty. So from main method, what we are doing, we are creating the object of this child three class. Okay, and we are storing it in the parent three reference that we are used to do in the uh, in the previous types. Okay. And we are calling object.x like parent three reference.x. Now, what will be printed over here? Okay. So we are creating the object of the child three class. Okay. And we are storing it in the parent three reference. So whenever you are creating the object of the child class and storing it in a parent three reference, so what it will do? It is an object type data, right? So it will point to the reference first. So it will point to the parent reference. So what parent reference is there? X equal to 10. Okay, so it will be going to the parent reference and it will point to x equal to 10. Okay, because it's the, it's not the instance variable. It's like a normal field value. Okay, we are initializing one field with certain data type. So it will point to the parent reference. Okay, but when it is instance variable, like you're creating an object at that point of time, it will point to the child reference. So here at this point of time, it will print x equal to 10 as the output. Because here we are making use of normal field variable. So it is actually overloading is happening. Okay. It is like field overloading. Okay. It is not method overloading. 
So that is very important concept to understand. So if there is method overloading kind of thing, then there would have been a different scenario. But it's like a field overloading, so it will point to the parent reference. So parent class reference has having x equal to 10, so it will point to x equal to 10. Okay. So now there is method overriding with different access modifiers. So here, if you observe, class parent 4 is having display method with parent display as a SOP statement. Then child 4 extends parent 4 with display method being overridden. Okay, now from main method, we are creating the object of this child class. Okay, and we are storing it in the parent reference. Okay, and then we are calling the display method. So, what will be my output over here if you are doing like this? Okay, so if you are doing like this, the output will be the currently over overridden display method. Okay, it will print the currently over, 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 overridden display method. Okay, and will print child display. So, here if you observe, I've just changed the name from parent. We have to change to parent four basically by mistake. I have done it so you can change parent to parent four and child to child four. Okay, so if you do that, then you are calling the display method, so it will print the overridden display method, so it will print child display as the output. Okay, yeah, because we are increasing the scope from protected to public, we are increasing the scope and its method overriding, so it will print child display. So now we are understanding about type eight, which is upcasting and downcasting. Okay, so parent five is having some show method which is having parents show child 5 extends parents 5 and has overridden show method and then there is display method also okay now we are creating the object of this child 5 and we are storing it in a parent 5 reference and then we are calling the show method so which show method will be called so obviously the overridden show method will be called so it will print child show okay but here if you observe we have downcasted it to child type child 5 type and then we are calling the display method so it will print child display okay so first it will print p dot show so what it will print it will print child show and then it will print child display so type 9 it's like a different variation of inheritance so calling parent class method using super keyword okay so if you observe over here parent 6 class is having display method okay with parent display and child 6 is extending from parent 6 and it is having display method with having super dot display. So what super will do? It will call the parent class constructor. Okay. So it will call super dot display. So parent class display method will be called. And then it will print the child display. Okay. So now from main method, we are what we are doing over here, we are creating the object of child six. Okay. And then we are calling the display method. So what it will do? It will go call to child six. Okay. And then it will go to the parent class because it's extending from parent. But before going there, it will see the overridden method. So if, if whenever there is a method overriding concept, it will go to the child class method. So child class method is having super dot display. So it will go to parent class display method. It will print parent display and then it will print child display. Okay, I hope you got the clarity of this. So it will print parent display and then it will print a child display. Okay. Then type 10. What is that type 10? So type 10 is static and non-static method calls. So here if you observe parent 7, child 7. Child 7 extends parent 7. Okay. So parent 7 is having static methods. Static method and instance method. Okay. And child 7, is, this question is very important question because it contains static methods as well as non-static methods. Okay. So let's understand that. So parent 7 contains static method and uh, instance method and child 7 extends parent 7 and it contains one static method and one overridden method instance method basically is overridden so now we are creating the object of child 7 class and we are storing it in the parent 7 reference so now if you are calling object dot instance method and object dot static method so which one will be called so for static methods it's actually method hiding okay so if you if you print object dot static method then what will happen it's showing warning because we are creating the object and then we are calling for static we should not create the object but for showing you like what is the functionality over here we have written, written it that way basically so if our obj dot instance method is called so what will be my output over here the output will be uh, instance method overridden method so overridden instance method value is child instance method so it will print child instance method then obj dot static method is called so which one will be printed so for static methods you know right it's a method hiding so in method hiding it will not call the child class method it will call the parent class method so it will print parent static method so what will be my output for this the output for me for this will be uh, instance method will be uh, child instance method then it will print parent static method so child instance method and parent static method will be my output for this so let's see that 
child instance method and parent static methods. So I hope you got a clarity like why this output is coming. Okay. Next is type 11, where this final method is being used in inheritance. So here, if you observe, parent 8 is having show method and child 8 extends parent 8, which also which has display method. Okay. And the uh, show method is having parent show, display method is having child display. And from main method, we are creating the object of child 8 class. And we are storing it in the parent 8 reference. And then we are calling the show methods. So what will happen over here? So here, if you see, it will uh, it will not allow to inherit the property, basically. Okay, whenever you are writing like this, it will not allow you to inherit its property. Okay, so it will print parent, parent show. But whenever you are trying to override that show method, it will not allow. Okay, because extending the parent class with the final method, it will not allow in child class. So for now, it will print the parent show. Okay, that's how. So final methods can't be overridden. So we can't override that show method that we have already discussed. Okay. So type 12. So this is also one of the important concepts. So let's understand this. Okay. So here, if you observe, there is a class parent, which has X equal to 10, one field value being initialized. Then one method is being written, get X. So, okay. So one is field, one is method. Then from method, we are returning that X. Okay. Then child extends parent, which which reinitializes x value to 20 and get x also return x. Same method is there. Okay. Now from main method, what we are doing, we are creating the object of child class and storing it in a parent reference. And then we are calling that x, like obj object from parent reference, we are calling the x and we are calling the get x. So now what will happen? So whenever there is a call to reference variable, like field value is there. So in that, it will point to parent class reference. So for that, obj.x, it will print x as 10. But whenever you are calling the, op, uh, sorry, whenever you are calling the method, so in that scenario, what will happen? It will call the child class method. Okay, the so child class method is get x method is there. So it will return the x, which is 20, because child class x value is, has been reinitialized to 20. Okay, so you are here, you are getting the concept, right? So why for uh, obj.x we are getting 10 and obj.getx we are getting 20, it, there is a very big concept over here. So whenever you, you are making use of field value like int x, int y, int a equal to something, then in that scenario, it will not go to child class field value. Why? Because it will always point to the parent class reference whenever you are making use of field values with certain data types, returning data types. But in case of method, the scenario gets changed. In case of method, there is a parent class which contains getx method. And in child class, there is extending parent class, which is uh, making use of that same getx method. It is overriding that getx method, basically. And then in case of overriding, you know already, right? It overrides or surpasses the parent class getx method. Okay. So overrides the uh, property of the overriding concept is this only. Whatever value of parent class getx method or any method is there, it will override that method value and will show or print the child class overridden method. The same method is being overridden, so it will print child class overridden method. So there is a concept of overriding over here. But in case of field value reinitialization, there is no concept of field overriding. Okay, so that's why it will point to the parent class reference for field value. And then for method, for method overriding, it will print the child class overridden method. So that's why for field, it will print 10. For method, it will print 20. I hope you got the clarity on this. This is very important question. So I hope you have understood a lot of things. We have discussed a lot. Okay. So this is one bonus question. So that we got to know. So that was, this was one of the bonus question. And this I have given the clarity, basically, whatever I have discussed, that is the clarity that has been put over here. So you can go through it. Okay. So this was it. So there is some other variations of questions as well with respect to exception handling and with respect to serialization, deserialization concepts are there, which is linked with inheritance. So if you pin down in the uh, comment sec section below, I will create a separate video containing consisting of those uh, in exception handling uh, with inheritance and serialization concept with inheritance. Okay. So if you want that video, you can comment it down. We will create a separate video like part two of this video. Okay. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video with next set of concepts. Till then, it's Devjitra signing off. Bye-bye.